G'day, I'm Splitzy. Welcome to the start of Planetary Survival in Space Engineers. Once a new star system map loads, you'll find yourself looking at a respawn menu. Choose the atmospheric lander so you can start down on the planet. Once you're in the lander, you need to start scouting for a good spot to land. You spawn in at an altitude where the lander's engines won't work, but they will kick in before you hit the ground, usually starting to be useful at around 4,500 meters. This is useful to remember, as any attempt to use your engines above this altitude will result in wasted energy. To start looking for a good spot to land, I like to go to the external camera by pressing V. Make sure your crosshair is lined up on the artificial horizon though, as that allows your engines to kick in and stop your fall. Use the ALT key so you can free look down at the ground. The important features to observe at the start are the darker textures on the ground and the location of ice lakes. The darker patches represent areas where ore can be found underground, often over 100 metres deep to the surface. Pick a patch to head towards and allow the ship to come to a hover nearby. At the beginning, you should be looking for uranium most of all. Even a small amount of it will avoid the need for massive numbers of solar panels. And while playing around with solar panels is fun, it's a lot more fun once you've already learnt the other aspects of the game as solar panels can create a situation where grinding out hours and hours and hours becomes necessary, so for an early player if you can get away without them, then that's going to be for the best. While we coast down we can have a look at our power situation. Our lander comes equipped with several batteries and a small reactor. The reactor is able to turn uranium into energy with a moderate peak output. The batteries, however, can store energy and provide your ship with a much higher peak energy output. Atmospheric thrusters use a lot of energy at once, so reactors are not normally enough to sustain flight. With the checkboxes on the batteries, my recommendation is to turn off all of them, so the batteries will discharge energy when the reactors don't provide enough, and store energy whenever the reactors have excess energy. This is ideal later once you've got a lot of uranium. Right now, it's not, so we'll leave them as they are until we find ourselves some uranium. Scout out the deposits until you find some uranium. This may take a bit of searching, but you have at least 20 minutes of fuel, so you should be able to find some. Once you've identified some uranium, my preferred ore scanning method is to fly close to the ground above a deposit, fly forward and back until you find the lowest reading in that direction, then fly left and right and do the same. When this is finished, make a GPS marker by going to the console and name it with the mineral and the distance to that mineral. Try not to have a goldfish memory like mine and enter the correct value the first time. Labeling like this makes it easy to mine the mineral later, as all you need to do is drill straight down until you are that same distance from the marker and you should have found what you're looking for. Land near the deposit you want to mine and park your ship. Your landing gear have multiple modes. When they are glowing blue, they will automatically lock to anything within their range, allowing you to park with a minimal amount of fuss. The blue will change to green and the thrusters will stop working once the landing gear is locked. The reason you made those GPS markers for the minerals is that your hand drill can only detect ore from a short distance away. The lander is technically a large ship, so it has an ore detector many times more powerful than the handheld drill. Before you head out to mine, make sure you shut down your ship's power systems. Open your ship's exit door first, then return to the cockpit and press Y while sitting in it to turn off everything.
head out the front door and make a GPS waypoint for the ship. Look for that uranium marker you made earlier. Once you're directly underneath it, the easiest way to get down to the ore is simply crouch and start drilling straight down. Use the right click drill method here as you don't want to get stuck in a hole full of bouncing rocks as the physics monster known as Clang will punish you for your mess. Once you're near the distance you wrote on your GPS marker, your handheld drill should be able to detect the nearby ore. At this stage you can usually rely on it to direct you the remainder of the way to your goal. When you find the uranium or other mineral, it will have a different texture to all the other rock around it. So at that stage you should change to left click mining so you can harvest all the resources. If your suit power is low when you've reached the ore, it's a good idea to mine your escape tunnel before mining any resources. Otherwise, fill up your suit then make sure you're no longer crouched and get that right click mine going again, only this time dig up in a nice straight line. The GPS marker you made for your lander can be a useful point to aim toward, and on less even ground, it's an absolute necessity if you are parked a long way away. Head back inside your ship and turn it back on. You can then put uranium straight into the refinery and start producing uranium ingots. You may notice that the amount of ingots in the refinery never seems to increase. This is because the reactor is constantly pulling the uranium straight out of it. If you look at the reactor's inventory, you can see the amount of available ingots is increasing. It's at this stage you can go to your batteries and change their settings. Uncheck all the checkboxes and you will now see the amount of stored energy in the batteries is increasing as your reactor has excess energy production. This will hopefully mean that by the time you have mined out a good amount of uranium, your ship's batteries will be fully charged, ready for more exploration. And now for the repetitive part. Shuttle back and forth down your hole like a good little prairie dog and load up your ship with a night time's worth of uranium. And your power situation will be sorted for a good deal of playtime. You can follow this process for all the minerals you want to collect so that you can start building your first ship. In the next video, I'll be showing you one method on how to create your first atmospheric mining ship. See you then.